What's going on guys? Root from NoShell.com here today and today we're looking at more Python. Now in this one we're going to be checking out some uh, testing operators. Now this can include comparison operators and membership operators. And this may very well turn into a, a bit of a long tutorial. So uh, strap on your seatbelts and uh, let's get rolling. I'm going to start up idle and you can do that exact same thing and we can work together and make some magic happen. I'm going to drag this over here. Let's create a new one, a new script, a new file, a new program, whatever you want to call it. I'm going to get my shebang started here. USR, bin, environment, Python. Look at that. All right. I'm going to save this as a uh, filed up Python. Overwrite whatever's there and we can get cracking. I'm just going to print something so we know what's happening. It's like, welcome to the world. And now let's set ourselves a variable. I'm going to stick with virgins like I did in the last example because I thought that was pretty cute. <laughs> so let's get started again. Let's get our if statement going. Hope you guys remember the syntax. It is obviously if. And you don't need these parentheses, but they're a good habit to get into. And now you're going to want to have your condition in here. And then you can have your code block down here. So if virgins is equal to 72... Actually, let's change stuff around. Let's create a new variable, like what Bin Laden said. 72. What Bin Laden said. Do -do 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 -do. Alright, we can uh, get out of that conditional statement, and let's create a little something so we know what's happening afterwards. Come back soon. Sweet. So now we got everything set up. We got our skeleton program, and we can start checking out what we want to check out. Uh, we're going to look at the comparison operator for the is equal to, just like we did in the last tutorial. This is going to keep things easy for now, and let's see what's happening. So I'm just going to print Bin Laden was right. Okay, let's run this, and we get, welcome to the world, so that's fine, that's before our if conditional statement, and then when we get to it, it says Bin Laden was right, because virgins was equal to what Bin Laden said. Let's come back soon, and, uh, yeah, that's good. Now, let's give ourselves a little bit more functionality here, I feel like this, this is kind of cheesy. So, let's print it, let's get a new line going there, and let's set virgins equal to raw input. How many virgins did you find? Don't ever ask anyone this on while well, you're like walking down the street, okay? I don't I don't want to get complaints. <laughs> I don't want someone to call me up and be like, "Hey, root of the null." Someone just randomly asked me, "How many virgins did you find while I was walking down the street today?" <laughs> this is your problem. And virgins here. So, what we're going to do is if let's see I want to convert this into an integer, just in case, uh, we could use, hmm, because I'm interested in seeing what will happen if we run this, and they, the, the user types in, um, a letter, and rather than a number, because we could just use input to get an integer number, but I want to have a little bit more functionality in that, see if we can do it. How many virgins did you find? Um, Doug? Yeah, that's going to have a problem. Okay. Let's just try raw input for now. Keep things simple. So virgins equals raw input. So if we try this one more time, how many virgins did you find? I found 72. Bin Laden was right. Uh, I'm just going to create a new line here. I don't want anything in that string variable, so it just creates a new line. It keeps it easy. How many virgins did you find? 72. Bin Laden was right. Come back soon. Okay. Do it again. How many virgins did you find? Eh, 10. Okay, nothing that time. So Bin Laden was wrong. Okay. What if we try, uh... What if we change this to less than? What if we change it to... Bin Laden was a little short. So now, in this case... If we enter a number of virgins that is less than 72, or less than what Bin Laden said, it's going to let us know that Bin Laden was a little short. A little, uh, actually, was over-exaggerating. I have no idea if that's one word. 
Huh. I should look that up sometime. Eh, whatever. Alright, run this. How many versions did you find? Uh, maybe 30. Bin Laden was over-exaggerating. Do it again. Yeah, let's say 100. Okay. That works perfectly fine. It's wrong, and we just skip that conditional statement. That's good. We can do that exact same thing for, uh... For less than. Under-exaggerating. How many versions did you find? Um, over 9,000. 9,001. <laughs> Laden was under-exaggerating. <laughs> there you go. And now you can do this exact same thing with uh, greater than and less than, or less than and equal to. So now we can do 72 or greater. Let's try it. F5. How many versions did you find? That many virgins. <laughs> Laden was over-exaggerating. Switch it back, run it again. 72. Bin Laden was under-exaggerating. Okay, that works. What if we did less than that? Let's say 10. And nothing. Okay, so it's understanding our comparison operators correctly. That's great. Let's let's do a little bit more. Let's see what this is is all about. I'm going to comment this out for now. And what I'm going to do here is actually... Yeah, you know. Let's cover more of that. <laughs> okay, so now that we've clean this up a little bit, we can get started with some more processing, because I want to use virgins as some more, because they're my favorite thing in the world. <laughs> and, uh, virgins is going to equal 72 in this case. Same as before, and then what Bin Laden said, it can be 72. So now, if virgins is equal to what Bin Laden said, Then we can do this exact same thing again. Print Bin Laden. Boin Laden. Oh, yes, I can type. Bin Laden was right. Bin Laden. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Bin Laden was right. Let's print this out here. Let's run it. And uh, Bin Laden was right. Come back soon. Cool. So now what we're going to try is this is statement. Is. If virgins is what ba Bin Laden said, um... You would think that this will run, and you are going to be disappointed if you don't already know Python. So here we go, and that does work, as far as I know. Bin Laden was right. Virgin is, is equal to what Bin Laden said, because they have the same value. But that's interesting. <laughs> because they're both integers, they have that same object, or that same historical, I don't, I don't want to say historical ancestor, because I feel like that's dumb, but they have that same background. They're both integers. They're of that, of the same object. And we'll get into object terminology a little bit, terminology a bit more later on, because it's more of an advanced subject, but Python treats data types like objects. And that will make a lot more sense once you actually understand what objects are, but for now, understand that they, he, Python does treat them as objects. So, virgins being 72 and what Bin Laden said is being 72. If virgins is what Bin Laden says, that says Bin Laden is right. So, run it again, get that exact same thing. Because we haven't done much to change it. So, good stuff. Now, we should look at the membership operator. This is interesting. This is another one that's a bit peculiar. Let's say our string here, um, needle... Needle equals bomb. <laughs> I feel like that's a little twisted. All right, haystack. Haydle, haystack can be bombshell. Do you guys understand what I'm getting at here? If the needle is in the haystack, we can display, we found the source of the ticking. I think it's I found the source of the ticking. I found the source of the ticking. And there we go, I found the source of the ticking. Now this is because bomb really is in bombshell. And that's kind of exactly what that membership operator means. If this is in something else, then it'll run it. It's because that string is inside that other string, it works perfectly fine. Let's change the value, though. Let's change it to a, a big O. I wonder what will happen here. Absolutely nothing, because that, that specific string is not in the haystack. Does that make sense? 
Now, we're going to be using in a lot more in some greater data types and things that we'll be talking about later on, but for now, you should know that it exists and that you can test for it in strings and that sort of thing. It's, it's going to actually test if something is in something else. Like, Python is supposed to be designed for that readability, and that's exactly what you get with the syntax and the keywords and, like, the naming. Cause. But yeah, uh, I feel like that's all. I think I've covered everything that I planned on covering. Uh, I hope you guys can be able to know and understand these comparison operators, understand the membership operator, whether something is inside something else, uh, and that sort of thing. So, thank you for watching, guys. Thank you for listening. I hope you could give me maybe a like, maybe a comment, maybe uh, maybe subscribe. Eh? Eh? I don't know. It's, it's your thing. But uh, thanks again, guys, and I'll see you in the next video.